Um, thank, thank you for the invitation, Cardona. In a way, I invited myself because I proposed uh, that you invite uh, Greg. Uh, and it's wonderful to share a podium with you for the first time, and hopefully not the last time. Um, I will uh, share with you uh, the story that uh, Cardona talked about in his uh, introduction. Uh, as he said that uh, I was uh, disinvited. Uh, and in fact, if you go to FIRE's website, you will see a long list of uh, uh, great people who have been disinvited to uh, US universities. And in a way, I was told that I should not be too disappointed because it's a badge of honor to uh, be disinvited. But, but nevertheless, of course, I regret that um, I couldn't speak at the University of Cape Town, in fact. The lecture should have taken place just 11 days ago. Um, but I will take you through this as a case study, uh, um, the kind of mechanisms that uh, Greg talked about in a more general uh, sense. Um, and in a way, for me, it was to go back in time, you know, 2006, 2007, because the fact of the matter is that I did not intend to talk about the cartoons in, at Cape Town University, but uh, I was disinvited because of my association with those uh, famous or infamous uh, cartoons. But I never told them, uh, and I understood afterwards that I anyway would have to talk about the cartoons if I, if I would go there. Um, um, but I received this invitation uh, already back in March 2015. So they had 15 months to figure out uh, who I was, what I you know, had uh, said in different contexts, uh, the books I have uh, published. Uh, but unfortunately, they never, they, they, never, they never bothered to get a copy of my book and read it. Um, uh, instead, they chose to uh, quote um, some of my most uh, vehement critics uh, in order to justify the, um, the uh, disinvitation, and I will come back to, um, to, to that. So it was only two months before the lecture was going to take place that I sensed that something maybe wasn't all right. Um, uh, and then there was an exchange, and finally, just uh, I think three weeks before uh, the lecture was going to take place, I was officially disinvited on <coughs> July 22nd. And um, it's 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 a very interesting document. And if you're interested in these cases, you can just Google my name and University of Cape Town and Max Price the name of the vice chancellor who uh, issued the official disinvitation. It's interesting because in many ways it's quite frank. Uh, he's not able uh, to hide his real motives. Uh, so it's a really good case study if you want to get into, into the mind of these people and, and uh, the way they try to defend these, uh, th these kind of decisions. Um, he listed uh, four arguments for disinviting me. The first one, of course, he started out, we are, I'm in favor of free speech. Um, but of course, there are also limitations uh, on free speech. Um, the first reason he provided was uh, that my lecture would provoke conflict on campus protest and possible disruption. Um, he didn't say, you know, that it was not in any way connected to me or that I intentionally would go there and try to disrupt and, and uh, incite people, but uh, um, uh, that in fact he would cave in to uh, you know, what he might think uh, other people would do and say uh, if I would be present on, on campus. It's a classical blame the victim uh, semantic figure, you know, like the rape victim asking her, why did you wear a short skirt at the discotheque uh, Friday night? Um, the second reason 
was security. And I think that is a very legitimate reason. Uh, you could see for yourself here, uh, my name, unfortunately, figures on uh, Al-Qaeda and Islamic State, uh, you know, uh, list of people um, who it would be a good thing to kill. So that is a very legitimate uh, concern. Um, and uh, I would not have had a problem if the Vice Chancellor had said, you know, uh, yes, we could possibly uh, provide necessary security for this lecture, but it just costs too much money. So it's not worth spending all that money uh, to uh, create a secure environment. Um, but he never made that point, and um, he was not also making it clear that, I mean, it is not I who incite violence. I do not go there and tell people to go out and riot or uh, uh, commit violence against Muslims or uh, whoever um, people may be the object of, uh, of violent actions. Um, so, so it was clear whether you know, I was the one who would incite violence or uh, uh, other people uh, reacting to my speech would uh, incite uh, uh, violence. And I think that is a very, that is a distinction that you have to make very clear. And we know it also from the debate about the cartoons. Uh, who, who, who are, who are we to blame for uh, violent reactions? Uh, could Westergaard a cartoonist or those who decide to commit violence? I think it's very clear. We are human beings. We have a mind. We have the ability to reason, and we are not animals uh, who are not able to make a decision about how to react uh, to an image or to, uh, to speech. Um, and then uh, the third reason for disinviting me was that my lecture might retard rather than advance academic freedom. Uh, that is that the vice chancellor wanted to restrict academic freedom in order to promote it. Um, and um, a good friend of mine, Nadine Strawson, when she read this, her comment was, this was like an American general during the Vietnam War who said, we have to erase the city in order to save it, or the village. Um, not very logical. Um, and then the final, the final argument was that I am a bigot and a racist, and therefore maybe it was wrong uh, from the beginning to uh, invite me to uh, give this very uh, presti prestigious um, lecture. And I just want to quote from, um, from the letter of uh, the Vice Chancellor. Um, he said, Mr. Rose is regarded by many around the world as right-wing Islamophobic, someone whose statements have been deliberately provocative, insulting, and possibly amount to hate speech. End of quote. I mean, I'm used to these kind of attacks, but I think in an academic uh, context, you could ask for being critical towards the sources that you are uh, using. That's, that's uh, an academic uh, discipline. And whom did he quote? He, quote, he quoted a review by a Danish professor who has been attacking me for the past 11 years, and he wrote a review of my book in English where he in fact distorted uh, what I was trying to say. He said, you know, that Fleming Rose is a person who wants to, um, wants to show that he is right and everybody else is wrong. And when you look at the paragraph in my book, I was exactly saying the opposite, that I started out this debate from the position, yes, I want to show I'm right and others are wrong. But uh, writing the book and traveling around the world and reflecting upon the issues about the issues I was dealing with, I came to the conclusion that you cannot make uh, you know, these clear-cut distinctions about who is right and who is wrong, because it depends on who you are your upbringing, your religious background, uh, your own individual history. 
that has been formative for the way you look at life and understand uh, things and your approach to, to religion. So he was in fact accusing me of saying something uh, that I did not say and in fact I said exactly the opposite. So that was the one source uh, for, um, for this quote. The other was uh, uh, from an American uh, subcultural publication from 2006 at the height of the cartoon crisis where so many myths were uh, you know, traveling around the world about me, about my newspaper, about the motivation for the cartoons, about what Julian's Post had published uh, earlier and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, he listed these four, um, four, four uh, uh, arguments and um, it elicited a very interesting debate in South Africa. I mean, dozens of comments in newspapers and, uh, and uh, the um, Free Speech Association, Penn South Africa, uh, last week published a collection of comments uh, from among their mem members, uh, yet you, you can also go to the web and, uh, and read. And uh, I mean, they are not agreeing. In fact, if you go back to 1989, there was a debate be between J.M. Kutsi, the Nobel um, uh, winner of literature, and Nadine Gordima about Simon Rushdie, and they also disagreed. Uh, Kutze was in favor of inviting uh, Rushdie. Nadine Gomida uh, wanted also to disinvite him. So, so, so there is a long tradition in South Africa for these debates, and South Africa is a very different society, of course, compared to Denmark and Norway. They have a very tormented history of, uh, I mean, race relations, uh, an apartheid regime, and so on and so forth. Um, Basically, uh, uh, the arguments pro and against um, my lecture uh, in the debate in South Africa was that on the one hand, people who would, uh, would like me to, to give that lecture said, I mean, we are a country that in fact experienced censorship during the times of apartheid. We should not repeat the mistakes of a regime that we fought for so many years and many of us went to prison to fight that regime. On the other hand, there were people who were basically saying, you know, we are still a very vulnerable society. Uh, if we provide a stage to Fleming Rose, it will possible uh, hurt the social fabric of, uh, of our society. So those, these two opposing views um, um, were in the public uh, uh, arena. Um, I, would, uh, I would like to finish by pointing to two, uh, two reactions that I find especially illuminating and, uh, and close to my heart um, in, in, in this context. The one is in fact by Kenan Malik, uh, whom um, Knut Olaf quoted, and if you don't know his book from Fatwa to Jihad, I would recommend it. I think it's, it's a great book. It's one of the best books, I think, on, on free speech in our multicultural uh, age. And Kenan Malik uh, wrote an open letter to, um, to the vice chancellor because he was the previous speaker giving this, uh, this lecture and protesting the disinvitation. And, and he said, on, on the accusa accusation of me being Islamophobic and, uh, and a bigot. And I quote, the UCT is entering a debate within Muslim communities and supporting the conservatives against the progressives. Um, what is called an offense to a community is more often than not actually a struggle within communities. There are many Muslims challenging religious-based reactionary ideas and policies, uh, policies and institutions. So he was making the point, and I think in Norway, in fact, you had a similar, I would say, example, when Susanne Breuger, a famous Danish author, 
uh, wrote an article, or she was giving an interview to Morgenbladet, Attacking Me, and afterwards she was being criticized by a Norwegian Muslim saying basically that she had taken, she had taken the side of Muslim reactionaries in order to, uh, to attack me. Uh, uh, the most important struggle about these issues today in not only in the West, but I think everywhere around the world when it comes to Islam and Muslims is going on within Muslim communities. And, uh, and, and, and these are not homogeneous, uniform, conformist uh, communities, but if we ascribe you know, certain opinions or sense of offense to the community as a whole, we make it more difficult for those individuals within these communities who would like to fight um, dogmas, um, limitations, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and the final reaction was by a young Muslim attending University of Cape Town, who was in fact saying to the Vice Chancellor when he was uh, justifying the disinvitation uh, with a reference to possible violence, was basically saying this young Muslim, what do you think, who, who, who do you think we are? You expect that if you invite somebody with whom some of us might disagree, that we will react in a very different way compared to any other minority on this uh, on this uh, campus. Uh, uh, and I mean, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> um, so so uh, yeah. And finally, uh, I mean, it's been a very educating experience for me to um, to to uh, be an object of uh, a disinvitation, and it also taught me, you know, a lesson also from the time of the, at the height of the cartoon crisis, that, that um, when information travels or when a story travels, it loses context. And, and this is a story about interacting context. And when uh, the story about the Mohammed cartoons traveled to South Africa, it was being read into this local uh, 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 situation, uh, I think, wrongly in the sense that they did not try to understand, they, they, they were not interested in the Danish context. And I think one of, the, uh, one of the key challenges of any individual in life is not just to create mirror images and mirror yourself in every event and experience in life, but try to understand uh, other people, other cultures, uh, other stories, other histories on their own terms without just projecting yourself into, uh, into another story. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, and this will be my last words, is that after having been disinvited, I received an invitation from another institution in South Africa. So I will go there next year and give the speech that I was not allowed to give this year. Thank you.